Sí, fue aquí, sí. Lo último que vimos fue eh, series con, convergencia y divergencia en series. ¿Cómo determinas una serie? Bueno, ¿qué es una serie convergente y qué es una serie eh, divergente? Aquí vamos a ver cómo podemos definir. Eh, el último fueron las series geométricas. Sí, sí. Ah, bueno, sí, así es cierto. Bueno, pero vimos las propiedades de las series geométricas y aritméticas y son convergentes y divergentes. ¿Qué fue esto? ¿Sí? Aquí está. ¿Correcto? El gran tema fue convergencia y divergencia en series. Y lo vimos en las series geométricas, en las series aritméticas y en las aritmético-geométricas. Hoy el tema es cómo le hacemos. ¿Cómo le hacemos para distinguir unas de otras? ¿Cuáles son las pruebas que nos permiten distinguir la, las series eh, convergentes de las divergentes y viceversa? Tómense. Here I'll introduce the turn test for the divergence of a series. Here's a typical geometric series. For an infinite geometric series with a ratio between terms is less than one, The series converges to a over 1 minus r, where a is the first term and r is the ratio. So for this series, that's a half, or 0.5, over 1 minus 0.5. So that's 0.5 over 0.5, which is 1. Great, so this series converges to 1. Here's a question about this series, though. If you look at the individual terms in this series, what value do they approach? The terms are a half, a quarter, an eighth, a sixteenth, and so on. So what value are these individual terms approaching? ¿En a qué valor se eh, acerca esta serie? ¿Cuál sería el límite de los términos para esta serie geométrica? ¿Cuánto? ¿Uno? ¿Alguien dijo uno? ¿Alguien dijo un infinito? ¿Va a ser cero? ¿Alguien dijo cero? ¿Cero? 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 So for this question, we're interested in the limit of the individual terms, not their sum. So if we look at the individual terms, we have a half, a quarter, an eighth, a sixteenth, the next would be 1 over 32, and then 1 over 64, and after a while, 1 over 1024, and after a longer while, 1 over 2 of 100 power. These individual terms are getting smaller and smaller, they're getting half each time. So their limit is zero. Tiende a cero. El límite tiende a cero. Right, they're approaching zero. The terms are 1 over 2 to the n. And in the limit as n goes to infinity, meaning we're looking at the nth term as n gets really, really big, this limit goes to zero. Now suppose we had some other series, the sum of the terms a n. And we know that the limit of the terms in this series, as n gets very large, approaches 1. Can you figure out if this series converges or diverges just from this information? Podríamos, si en esta serie, si el límite de, de, de A sub N cuando N tiene límite es igual a 1, la serie sería convergente a 1, divergente, y puede ser tanto convergente como divergente, o eh, converge, pero no podemos saber en cuál valor. ¿no? Right. Without even knowing anything else about the series, we know that it has to diverge. Why? Because this limit means that eventually all the terms will be very close to 1. And if we keep adding up 1s, the sum will diverge, going off to infinity. In fact, if the limit of the terms is anything except 0, it will be impossible for the sum to converge. That's the basis of the term test. Let's write it down. Suppose we have a series, say, a1 plus a2 plus a3, etc. If the limit of terms is anything but zero, including undefined, then the series always diverges. If the limit of the terms is zero, then the series can converge, like the geometric series we looked at at the beginning, or it could also diverge. The term test is really a divergence test, because we can never use this test to make sure a series converges. To really know if something converges, we need to use other tests. Bien, entonces, se termina la prueba de los términos eh, define que si el límite de los términos es diferente de cero, entonces sería divergente de cero. O sea, divergente. Si, no, si es igual a cero, 
no podemos saber. Tenemos que usar alguna otra prueba. Y eso es lo que vamos. ¿Cuáles otras pruebas de convergencia y divergencia hay? Hay varias. Como por ejemplo, la prueba de comparación. De comparación de series. In this tutorial, we'll introduce the comparison test, which can help you determine if a series converges or diverges. Let's say the heights of these bars represent the infinite series of Bs, so B1, B2, B3, and so on. If you add up all the areas of the bars, you'll get the sum of this series. Now, here are the terms of another infinite series, the A's. And A1 is less than B1, A2 is less than B2, A3 is less than B3, and so on. Let's say that all the A's are less than the corresponding B's. Now suppose I tell you that the sum of the B's converges. What can you say about the sum of the A's? Bien, tenemos dos series de números. ¿Sí? Los números están representados por barras. Puede ser esto 10, 7, 9, 8, no sé. Y tenemos otra serie que proporcionalmente con esta alta serie, sus números son menores. Si decimos que la, o si sabemos que la serie de números mayores es convergente, ¿qué podríamos decir de la serie de números menores? Son divergentes. No, no. Pero es convergente. Si son proporcionales ambas series, si una es convergente, la otra, la otra también debería ser convergente. Right. The sum or area of the A's is less than the sum of the B's. So the sum of the A's also has to converge. And the A's have to converge to a value less than the B's. And if I instead tell you that the sum of the A's diverges, then what can you tell me about the sum of the B's? Ahora, otra vez tenemos las dos series, una de números mayores, otra de números menores. Y decimos que la serie de números menores, o sabemos que la serie de números menores es divergente. ¿Qué podemos decir de la serie de números mayores? Exactly. If the smaller series diverges, then the bigger series must diverge as well, since the area taken up by the B's is greater than the area taken up by the A's. If the sum of the A's goes to infinity, then the sum of the B's goes to infinity as well. Let's try using this comparison test on an example. Here's the series 1 plus 1 over 1 factorial, plus 1 over 2 factorial, plus 1 over 3 factorial, plus 1 over 4 factorial, plus 1 over 5 factorial, and so on. Does this series converge or diverge? To find out, we're going to compare it to this series over here. 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2 squared plus 1 over 2 cubed plus 1 over 2 to the fourth, and so on. Adding up 1 over all the powers of 2. First off, does this series down here converge or diverge? Yeah. Tenemos aquí como ejemplo dos series. Una serie que es eh, esta de números racionales, donde el denominador es eh, factorial del tipo. Si ¿Sí? recuerdan, no han visto lo que son los números factoriales. ¿Sí? El factorial de un número sería el producto de este número por el anterior aquí es más de este por el anterior sea 2 por 1 sería 2 y el factorial de 1 sería 1 el factorial de 2 sería 2 el factorial de 3 sería 2 por 3 por 2 por 1 sería 6 el factorial de 4 sería 4 por 3 por 2 por 1 ¿cuánto? entonces eh, un, sería 1 entre 1 1 entre 2 1 entre 6 1 entre etcétera. Sí, sí. Mientras que lo de abajo tenemos son números elevados a potencias crecientes. El, eh, aquí sería 0, aquí sería 1, 2 a, a la primera potencia, 2 al cuadrado, 2 al cubo, 2 al cuadrado. Bien, ¿qué podemos decir de la serie de abajo? Ah, de la serie de potencia, de números de operaciones de potencia. ¿Es divergente? Ahí dice que es divergente. ¿Es que es convergente? ¿Por qué es convergente? Porque tiende a cero. No, tiende a uno. Bueno, pero 
Otita 1, este, no, se va reduciendo el, 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 el denominador, ¿correcto? Pero tenemos aquí un número que nos define el, la, la suma a un número específico, aunque no podemos saber exactamente cuál es, pero es convergente. Right, it converges. If you ignore this one over here, the rest of it is a geometric series, which converges. So this geometric series here converges to a certain number, and if you add one to this series, it will converge to that same number, but plus one. The point is, this series converges. Now we can use the comparison test when all the terms in one series is greater than all the terms in the other series. Is that the case here? Uh, um son todos los términos de una de las series, todos los términos, mayores que de, o iguales que los de la otra. Eh, ¿O no? Sí, todos los términos de la serie superior, todos los términos de la serie superior son mayores que todos los términos de la serie inferior. O todos los términos de la serie inferior son mayores que los de la serie superior. O no, algunos, números, algunos términos de una serie son mayores que los de la otra, pero algunos de la serie inferior pueden ser mayores que los de la serie superior. ¿Cuál de las tres afirmaciones es cierta? La primera. La primera. La última. La última. La segunda. So let's look at each term. The first term is equal in the two of them. And here now we have 1 over 1 and 1 over 1, so the second term is equal. The third term of each series, this one is 1 over 2, and this one down here is 1 over 2. So the third terms are equal. Okay. Now we have 1 over 6 and 1 over 4. So the bottom series is the bigger one, because a fourth is bigger than a sixth. And 1 over 4 factorial is 1 over 24, and this is 1 over 8. So the bottom series is bigger again. Here, this is 1 over 120. 5 factorial is equal to 120. And this is 1 over 2 to the 4th. This is 1 over 16. So the first couple of terms are equal, equal, equal. But for all the later terms, the bottom series has the bigger terms. So when we say that the series on the bottom has the bigger terms, as with this answer here, it means that all the terms in the bottom series are greater than or equal to the terms in the top series. Recuerden que los términos son los números de la serie, no los numeradores o los denominadores. Sí, estos, eh, la, los denominadores son mayores en la serie superior, pero con lo que tenemos son números, vamos a decir, los inversos de, son fraccionarios, la, este número es más pequeño que este. Entonces, mucho cuidado cuando determinamos la relación de, ma, de, de, de mayor a menor en números cuando son números enteros o cuando son números racionales. Excellent. Yes. Every term in the bottom series is bigger than its corresponding term in the top series. So now we know that the bottom series converges and that every term in the bottom series is bigger than its corresponding term in the top series. So what can you say about the top series? Si la serie de abajo es convergente, la serie de arriba también será convergente. Diga en el chat. La última. Todo contar lleva la contra. Diga cómo. Divergente. Okay. Bottom series converges. Bottom series has the bigger terms. The top series has the smaller terms. So if these bigger terms add up to a certain number, that means that the smaller terms had better also add up to an even smaller number. They can't go up to infinity. So this top series converges. Es un número mayor que uno. Igual que en este caso. Right. As you found earlier, if a series like the blue one here converges, 
and if all the terms of another series are smaller, like they are for the orange series here, then that smaller series also has to converge. So this series on top has to converge as well. Can you figure out what the sum of this bottom series is? ¿Cuál es entonces la sumatoria de la serie inferior? Ah, bueno, es uno, es dos, no, uno más, un, 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 dos, más un, me, más un medio, dos punto cinco, más, ¿cuál es el otro? Más uno, un cuarto, es, sería dos punto setenta y cinco, más eh, un octavo, dos punto ochocientos setenta y cinco, más... Un sesavo, dos punto, ¿a cuánto? Tres. Tiende a tres. Correcto. Right, it's three. And since each term in the top series is smaller than each term in the bottom series, this top series has to add up to a value that's less than three. The sum of this top series turns out to be about 2.718. And if you add up the infinitely many terms here, this sum turns out to be E, or Euler's number. So congrats, you just proved that the number E, by this definition, converges to a number less than three. Okay, last question. Let's switch things up a little bit. Suppose the larger series, shown in blue here, diverges. What can you say about the smaller series? Bien. Eh, si la serie superior, en este caso, es divergente, ¿qué pasa con la serie inferior? So now we know that the B's, the bigger series, diverges. What can we say about the smaller series? Well, let's look at some examples. Let's say that each term AN is one half of BN. So the A's are all smaller than the B's. They're half of the B's. But if you add up all the B's and they sum up to infinity, then the A's will add up to half of infinity, which is still infinity. So the A's could very well diverge. But if you make the A's really small, a lot smaller than the B's, you could come up with an example where the A's converge. So you really have no idea if this sum of the A's converges or diverges, because it's the smaller series. So it's this choice here. En el caso de la divergencia es un poco diferente. En el caso de la convergencia si una converge la otra también. En el caso de la divergencia la prueba de comparación nos ofrece problemas. Right. You need more information. And if you know that the smaller series converges, then you can't say whether the larger series converges or diverges. You have a series and you want to use another series to compare it to using the comparison test, pick that other series carefully. Otherwise, you'll end up in a case like this, with not enough information, and the comparison test won't help you at all. Entonces necesitamos otras pruebas, además de la de comparación. A veces la de comparación no es concluyente. No es concluyente. Puede sugerir un resultado, pero el resultado puede no ser verídico. Hay que cotejar con alguna otra prueba adicional. Como suele, como puede llegar a suceder en las series llamadas series armónicas. ¿Cuáles son las series armónicas? Let's take a look at what's called the harmonic series. The harmonic series can be written like this in sigma notation. It's one over one plus one over two plus one over three plus 1 over 4, plus 1 over 5, and so on. In this tutorial, we'll try to figure out whether the harmonic series converges or diverges. We'll figure this out using the comparison test. Let's compare the harmonic series to another series, which we'll write here in blue. This other series will be 1 over 1, plus 1 over 2, plus 2 terms of the 1 over 4, plus 4 terms of the 1 over 8, plus 8 terms of the 1 over 16, and so on. For this blue series, what would be the next group of terms after these 1 over 16 terms? Bien. Esto es lo que se llama una serie armónica. 
para poder eh, definir eh, si es convergente o divergente, vamos a compararla, vamos a tratar de comparar, vamos a dar una prueba de comparación con una serie parecida, al menos se parece, son números racionales, eh, son números irracionales y tienen esta relación. 1 entre 1, 1 medio, más 2 veces 1 cuarto, más 4 veces 1 octavo, más 8 veces 1 dieciseisavo. ¿Cuál sería el siguiente grupo de términos en esta serie? La, la, la segunda. La segunda. La tercera. ¿La tercera? Hoy te levantaste con el pie izquierdo. <risa> <laughs> okay, now it's time to compare these two series. They have the same first term, 1 over 1, and they have the same second term, 1 over 2. Now if we look at the third and fourth terms, which series is bigger, the top or the bottom? One series is bigger. In those terms, what series are bigger? The first one. Sí, pero aquí son dos cuartos que me hacen un medio y aquí tengo un cuarto más un tercio me da un área mayor, una cantidad mayor, un número mayor. Right. A third plus a fourth is bigger than a fourth plus a fourth. And now let's look at the next four terms, which are the four one eighths down here. Which set of four terms has the bigger sum? ¿Cuál grupo de cuatro términos tiene eh, suma un número más grande? ¿De abajo? ¿Alguien dijo de abajo? No, porque es de arriba. Por lo mismo, un, un quinto es más que un octavo, un sexto es más que un octavo, un séptimo es más que un octavo, y aunque es un octavo, la suma a todos él me da un número más grande. Que Once again, the top series is bigger. Finally, let's look at the 1 16th terms. Which series is bigger when you add up these terms? Right. Once again, the harmonic series is the bigger series. It turns out that for every term in both series, the harmonic series is equal or bigger than its corresponding term in the series on the bottom. So let's label the harmonic series as being the bigger series. And this series that we wrote on the bottom is the smaller series. Next, let's find out if this bottom series converges or diverges. We can combine the two one-fourth terms to make a half. We can also combine the four one-eighth terms to make another half. And if you add up all the one-sixteenth terms in this series, what do you get? ¿Qué sería entonces de los ocho términos de un Exactly, that's another half. And if you add up all the 1 over 32, 1 over 64, and 1 over 128 terms, each of those adds up to another half. So in this bottom series, there are infinitely many halves that we're adding up. So would you say that this series on the bottom converges or diverges? Entonces, esta serie es convergente o divergente? If you look at these terms here, we're adding up infinitely many halves. So this series definitely diverges. Now on top of that, you're adding one to it, which doesn't really affect anything. It still diverges. Right, it diverges. If you add up infinitely many halves, the sum goes to infinity. This series, as we've currently written it, also fails the term test. In order for a series to converge, the individual terms have to go to zero, and these just stay at a half. Okay, so this smaller series diverges. What does that tell you about the bigger harmonic series? La serie armónica superior, la mayor, como es 
es convergente, divergente, o podría en algunos casos ser convergente y en otros divergente. Convergente. ¿Es convergente? So if the smaller series diverges and the harmonic series is even bigger, it also has to go to infinity or diverge. Right. If the smaller series diverges, then the bigger series has to diverge as well. Great. So you've just proven that the harmonic series diverges. Hay otro tipo de series que ya vimos un poco, un ejemplo, cuando vimos un, unas series de números eh, racionales donde el denominador estaba elevado a una potencia. Bien. A eso le podemos llamar series de P. ¿Qué es eso? ¿Sí, 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 In this tutorial, we'll talk about what are called P-series and whether they converge or diverge. A P-series is a sum that looks like this. It's the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the P power. As you change this exponent P, sometimes the series will converge and other times it will diverge. Well, let's see an example when P equals 1. It's the harmonic series. The sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n, which you can also write as 1 over 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 5, and so on. Does the harmonic series converge or diverge? Bien, entonces aquí la potencia sería 1. P es 1. Entonces, eh, desde 1 hasta infinito sería 1 a la 1, 2 a la 1. Right, it diverges. Now let's look at another P series where the power is a half. So that's 1 over root 1 plus 1 over root 2 plus 1 over root 3 plus 1 over root 4 plus 1 over root 5 and so on. Let's figure out if this series converges or diverges. To do that, let's compare these two series here. Which series has the larger terms? No, 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 eh, ¿Cuál de las dos tiene los términos más grandes? ¿La de abajo? La de arriba. arriba. ¿Cuáles de esas opciones? Son tres opciones. ¿La segunda? The first term in each of these series is equal to 1. 1 over 1 is 1. And 1 over the square root of 1 is also just 1. 1 half, we can write as 0.5. And 1 over the square root of 2, the calculator tells us that that's equal to 1 divided by the square root of 2, or 0 0.707 approximately. So this is 0 0.707. You can check each of the additional terms, but what you'll find is that the terms on the bottom are usually greater than the terms on top. Exactly. The bottom series has the larger terms. 1 over root 1 is 1, which is the same as 1 over 1. But all the other terms are bigger in the bottom series. 1 over root 2 is bigger than 1 over 2. 1 over root 3 is bigger than 1 over 3, and so on. 
So the terms in the bottom series are bigger than those in the top. And if the top series diverges, what does that mean about this series on the bottom? If the smaller series diverges, meaning that sum goes to infinity, then the bigger series has to diverge as well. Yes, it diverges as well. We saw that when P was a half, the series diverges. It turns out that P series diverge for all values of P less than or equal to 1. When P equals 1, you get the harmonic series, which we said diverges. Next, let's look at when P is larger than 1. Let's look specifically at when P equals 2. So that's 1 over 1 squared, plus 1 over 2 squared, plus 1 over 3 squared, and so on. Which of these two series has the bigger terms? Ahora, eh, ¿qué sucede si la potencia es un número mayor que 1? Un número entero mayor que 1. ¿Cuál de las dos series tiene los términos mayores? ¿La armónica o la serie de P donde P es igual a 2? La de arriba tiene los términos más grandes, entonces sería la armónica. Yes, the squares are the smaller terms. So if you know that the harmonic series diverges and that the squares here are the smaller terms, what can you say about this series down here? So we know that the bigger series diverges. Its sum goes off to infinity. What can we say about the smaller series? Well, it could also diverge and go off to infinity. Or it could go to a number, like 17. We actually have no idea what the smaller series will do. So the comparison test is inconclusive here. Exactly right. You can't say whether it converges or diverges. So let's try comparing this to another series. Here's our series of squares. And the series we'll compare it to starts with 1 over 1 squared, and then two terms that are 1 over 2 squared, followed by four terms that are 1 over 4 squared, and then eight terms that are 1 over 8 squared, 16 terms of 1 over 16 squared, and so on. Which series has the larger terms here? Comparando estas dos series, ¿cuál de las dos tiene los términos mayores? La segunda. La primera opción. La naranja. Right. The bottom series has the bigger terms. Their first terms are equal. But 1 over 2 squared plus 1 over 2 squared is bigger than 1 over 2 squared plus 1 over 3 squared. And if you look at the next four terms, the bottom series has the bigger sum. And the same goes for all the other terms. So the sum of the bottom series is bigger than the sum of the top series. Now let's combine the two 1 over 2 squared terms. Adding 1 over 2 squared and another 1 over 2 squared gives us 2 over 2 squared. And we can combine the four 1 over 4 squared terms to get 4 over 4 squared. If we keep combining more groups of terms in this series, we get 8 over 8 squared, 16 over 16 squared, 32 over 32 squared, and so on, with higher powers of 2. We can cancel out these numerators with the square and the denominators. So this bottom series is equal to 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 8 plus 1 over 16, and so on. This is a geometric series. What's its sum? Mayor, 
ya lo hemos visto varias veces. Yeah, this geometric series adds up to two. And if it adds up to a finite number, that's what it means to say that the series converges. So if the series with the bigger terms converges, what can you say about the series up here with the smaller terms? ¿Qué pasa con la serie de números menores? Converge a un valor menor de 2, converge a un valor mayor de 2, diverge, o la prueba de comparación es, no es concluyente. Exactly. This series converges, and it has to converge to a number less than 2. If you add up all these terms, which are 1 divided by the squares, it adds up to about 1.6449. And if you add up the infinitely many terms in this series, it turns out to add up to exactly pi squared over 6. So this p series, in which the exponent p is 2, converges. You know that the harmonic series diverges. It turns out that the harmonic series is the border between when a p-series converges or diverges. You found that p-series diverge when p is less than or equal to 1. But p-series converge for every p greater than 1. You showed it converges when p equals 2. But even when p equals 1.0000000001, this series will still converge. Okay. Estas son las reglas para las series de depende de el valor de la potencia si es un, un menor que uno o mayor que uno bien ya puedo pasar al sí ya sí 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 no, sí bueno. bien bien Vamos ahora a la prueba de proporción o ratio test. Ratio de razón o proporción. Here we'll introduce one of the most useful convergence tests, called the ratio test. First, let's look at an example. The series n squared over 3 to the n, from n equals 1 to infinity. What's the first term in this series? Bien. Para esa serie, ¿cuál sería el primer término? Cuando n de, 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 desde n igual a 1 hasta infinito, sería un décimo. Un décimo. Si n es 1, 1 al cuadrado es 1, 3 a la 1 es 3. Es un décimo. Right. The first term is a third. Then 4 over 9, 9 over 27, 16 over 81, 25 over 243, and so on. The numerators are all the squares, and the denominators are powers of 3, which seem to get bigger even faster than the squares do. So one way to find out if this series converges is to perform a comparison test, where we compare this series to another series. Let's compare it to this series here, 4 over 2 to the n. Which of these two series has the bigger terms? Bien. ¿Cuál de estas dos series tiene los premios mayores? Yes, every term in the bottom series is bigger than its corresponding term in our original series up here. Now, does this series down here converge or diverge? La serie de abajo, porque es mayor. La serie de abajo. ¿Es eh, convergente o divergente? Sí, convergente. 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 Todo es convergente. Exactly. It converges because it's a geometric series. This series happens to converge to 4. Anyway, because the bigger series converges, that means the smaller series must converge as well. Great. So we've used the comparison test to show that our series converges. But sometimes it's not easy to find a good series to compare to. Finding this series here took some careful checking. Most of the time, instead of doing a comparison test, 
there's another convergence test you can use instead, called the ratio test, which we'll introduce now. For this test, we'll be taking the ratio of neighboring terms in the series. We'll be looking specifically at the n plus 1 term in the series, divided by the nth term. For example, the second term divided by the first term is 4 ninths over 1 third, which is approximately 1.333. The second term is bigger than the first. Let's find the ratio of two later terms in the series. 25 over 243 over 16 over 81. Their ratio is about 0.52, so the fifth term is smaller than the fourth. For the ratio test, we want to look at the limit of this ratio between neighboring terms as n goes to infinity. In other words, if we look at a term in the series that's really, really far down in the series, how much smaller is the next term in the series? Try plugging in a really large value of n to see if you can figure out what this limit is. Entonces, la, la prueba de razón o proporción comparamos pares de términos en la serie. Eh, ¿Cómo será entonces si tomamos un par de números, un par de términos, perdón, pero cuando están muy adelante en esa serie, que es una serie infinita? ¿Cuál será el límite de esta razón o proporción entre esos dos términos? Dos términos que están muy adelante, muy hacia allá, en esta serie. ¿Número? ¿Cero? ¿La proporción será cero? No, cero punto cero es cero. ¿Uno? ¿Un tercio? Okay, let's try a large value of n, like n equals 10. So we're looking for the 11th term in the series divided by the 10th term. We want to find this ratio. Well, the 11th term in the series is 11 squared, which is 121, over 3 to the 11th power. And we're getting that from this formula right here. The tenth term of the series is 10 squared, which is 100, over 3 to the tenth power. We want the ratio between these two terms. When we divide by this fraction, it's the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. So this is all equal to 121 over 3 to the 11th times 3 to the tenth over 100. And this 3 to the tenth cancels out 10 powers of the 3 down here. So this is equal to 121 over 3 times 100, which is 300. Let's use a calculator to see what this equals. 121 divided by 300 is about 0.4. Okay, so this fraction is about equal to 0 0.4. And if you use larger and larger values of n and plug them into this limit, you'll find that this approaches one third. Great. Now let's see if we can prove what this limit is. The nth term in the series is n squared over 3 to the n. To find the n plus 1 term, we can replace all the n's with n plus 1. So the n plus 1 term in this series is n plus 1 squared over 3 to the n plus 1. Try evaluating this limit. Bien. ¿Cuál sería el límite de esta razón? Cuando n Right. This limit is a third. So the ratio of successive or neighboring terms in this series approaches a third. And earlier we found that this series converges. It turns out that whenever the limit of this ratio is less than one, this series will converge. 
Well, actually, that's not exactly true. Ratios between terms can be negative as well, in which case the terms in a series keep switching off between positive and negative values. So for a series to converge, this ratio should also be greater than minus 1. What's an equivalent way to write these two inequalities here? Exactly. So another way to write this whole expression is to say that the absolute value of this limit is less than 1. So if this inequality is true, the series will converge. If the absolute value of this limit is greater than 1, the series will always diverge. And finally, if this ratio equals 1 or minus 1 exactly, which happens more often than you might like, you can't determine whether the series converges or diverges. You'll have to use another convergence test. These rules are known as the ratio test because they involve the ratio of successive terms in the series. In this tutorial, we didn't prove why the ratio test works. If you've got the time, you can think more about why this test works. It turns out that performing the ratio test is the same thing as performing a comparison test to a geometric series. But if you're more interested in learning the rules of the ratio test, then here they are. Para terminar, veamos qué sucede cuando tenemos series alternantes. Here we look at series that are alternating. An alternating sequence or series is one that switches between positive and negative terms, like this one here. 13 is positive, then minus 5 is negative, 2 is positive, minus 1 is negative, 4 is positive, and the next term here would be negative. Which of the following series is an example of an alternating series? Next, we'll try to figure out when alternating series converge. But first, here's a series that's not alternating. Every term is positive. It's the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 4 over 2n minus 1. So that's 4 plus 4 thirds plus 4 fifths plus 4 sevenths plus 4 ninths, and so on. All the numerators are 4, and the denominators are all the odd numbers. Does this series converge or diverge? Bien, tenemos a la serie, arriba los numerados son 4 y los números los numerados son números nobles. Esa serie es convergente o divergente. Convergente. Algunos dicen convergente, otros dicen divergente. Es el mayor que uno. Right. This series here diverges. One way to show that is to use the comparison test with the harmonic series, shown here. Each term in the harmonic series is smaller than its corresponding term in this series up here. So because the harmonic series diverges, this series diverges as well. And we can write that the sum of this series is infinity. Let's plot the partial sums on the number line. The first term is 4, and then we're adding 4 thirds to that, and then 4 fifths, then 4 sevenths, and then 4 ninths. The individual terms are getting smaller and smaller, but as you add up infinitely many terms, this sum diverges to infinity. But now let's return to alternating series. Let's make this series alternating by putting a minus sign in front of every other term. Now, does this series converge or diverge? Let's plot the partial sums on the number line again. 
Again, the first term is 4. Next, we're subtracting 4 thirds from that. So we move back to here. Then we're adding 4 fifths, and then subtracting 4 sevenths, and next we add 4 ninths. If we keep adding and subtracting more terms, this series will converge to a point right around here. It turns out that this series converges to the number 3.14159, etc. Does this number look familiar? La transformamos en una serie alternante. Sucede esto. Ese número es. ¿Cuál es? Pi. Yes, this alternating series here converges to pi. As a general rule, every alternating series converges if its individual terms approach zero. Another way to say that the terms are approaching zero is to say that the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth term in the series is zero. Take a look at this alternating series that converged up here, where the magnitude of the nth term is 4 over 2n minus 1. This limit goes to zero, and so this series up here definitely converges. Buen trabajo. Con eso hemos Nos vemos el miércoles para ver diferencias secuenciales.